Hello. All right, so today we're going to talk about inputs, and I'm going to go back to what we learned last week where we looked at simple inputs and more complex inputs. So right here we're looking at a simple switch input and specifically a door ajar switch. And if you take a look, I have right here this left front door ajar switch, and it goes from a ground. The sensor itself is ground, and it has a switch that's normally open. It's going to go through a tan wire. I know it's hard to see on this film, but it's going to follow up along this and into that tan wire on that pin 4 left front door ajar going into the body control module. Well, I'm gonna show you what kind of signal we're looking for at this sensor. So I drew it over here. Here's that electric control module, right there, the body control module. And as that wire comes out, remember on the inside, it has a fixed resistor and probably either five volts or the battery 12 volts. And as it comes down, it's gonna go through that open switch, which is right there, normally open. And then it's grounded right there. Well, now here I drove, drew a wire that's got a ground off of it. This switch, if you notice, doesn't have a wire. It's actually component grounded. So I'm gonna show you that in a second. Um, actually, let's go take a look at it right now. So if you look, I've already kind of pre-opened up. Let me get my light in here. Right here, inside here, come around right there. So if you look right here on my finger, here is the switch. Here's the wire coming in. It's kind of hard to see, but we have that tan wire deep down inside there. And then it goes into this connector and then the switch right here. And so the top half of the switch is what's coming from the computer. The bottom half is the component ground, just like we saw on the diagram. So I'm going to remove the switch just to show you what it looks like. Here, let's take a look at the switch. Okay, it's a plunger type switch simple open and close switch. And as I remove this, I'm gonna show you what it looks like in the back of this. So let me pull this out. I have to disconnect it and show you the wiring. So the back of the switch, if you look, when I, when I screw it down to the chassis, CS metal strapping, that is the ground. So as you look on this schematic right here, so take a look right there. See, notice the ground symbol is right on the component versus a wire. This tells me the component itself is the ground. So let's take a look back at the switch and you can see that that metal strapping is part of the ground. So here is the two contacts of the switch, the wire coming in from the computer and then this part going down to the screw that grounds it. So right here, this is the tan wire that we saw on the schematic. This is the part going to the computer. And if we look back at this schematic, remember it's a fixed resistor that's gonna send and According to Ohm's law, voltage goes all the way up to that open until the switch is closed. Now what's weird is when I open the door, that's when the switch closes. So this will be either battery voltage or five volts up to that open until I open the door, which closes the switch. This whole section goes 0.1 or less, according to Ohm's law, up to that fixed resistor. And if you remember, right inside here, the computer's monitoring that voltage. So let me put this back together and then we'll measure it. So I have to ground this switch back in order for it to work. And I have to connect this wire. There it is. I'm gonna put my screwdriver in here to try and keep this open so you can see it the best you can. Now here's the part that's gonna get uh, kind of opposite what I told you. I know I told you the ground is the only known good ground on a car, but I don't have a jumper at home that goes long enough. So I already tested this jam. This is going to suffice for us right now, but I'm going to show you on this voltmeter right here. You see that voltage? Now look what happens if I try to touch that lead that's coming in right from the computer. See what I get? Oh, let me turn the key on. Get back on here. To get a good connection here. Hold on. It's the, I'm gonna hold that right there. Let's see if I can get this in here. I gotta get that connector in there. Make sure I got a good ground. Bear 
check me and make sure this is in all the way. I just had this working. Hold on. Got to get all the way on here. It's kind of hard to get through this camera in here. There we go. Okay, so now if you look right here, I have 10.6 volts. And if you remember when I told you when you're working on electrical components in a car, the first thing you want to do is check the battery. Because if I got, if I have 10.6 volts, what should I have right here? You know, you would think closer to 12 volts. So I'm going to go actually turn on a battery charger and I'm going to prove a point. I'll be right back. So as it kicks on, you're going to see this voltage climb. So what I'm showing you is that first thing you need to do when you're working on electrical components, inputs or outputs, you gotta make sure the battery vo source voltage is good. And I knew this vehicle is gonna be low, so I had a battery charger standing by. And now look, I'm getting closer to that 12 volts that you're all familiar with as nominal battery voltage. So now if you take a look inside the switch, what I have in here is I'm back probed on that tan, that tan wire and I have my thumb pushing on the switch. Now look at my thumb, I'm pushing on the switch, acting as if the door is shut, right? Which makes the switch what? Open. So let's take a look at the schematic right here. And if you look, the switch is open. With my thumb pushing on it, the switch is drawn as what's what's normally at rest. See how it's open at rest, which means the door shut. When I open the door, it closes a switch. I know that's backward, but that's what happens. So coming out of this computer, I have on this tan wire, battery voltage all the way to the open of the switch. When I open the door, that switch closes. So what's gonna happen to this leg, which is this ground leg that comes up. So between the switch and the computer, this section here is gonna go from that battery voltage to point one or close to it. So let's take a look at my meter. I had it turned off, but let's see, hold on a second. Should be DC, there we go. Okay, now I'm gonna open up my thumb. So if you take a look at my thumb, now I'm gonna release it as if I open the switch. And if you take a look, see what the switch does, okay? 0, .0, and I close it down, we're back up to 11.39 volts right now. I know the battery's low. But that's what's happening. So when I open the door, that closes a switch, which grounds that circuit. And since I'm so close to ground, it's basically zero, showing you zero volts. So when I open the switch, voltage up to the open. So this actually is a really simple input. It just opened or closed. The computer's looking for Ohm's law up to that switch. Again, when I when the door is closed, switch is open, I get 11 volts all the way up to that switch open. And when I open the door, the switch closes, grounding that whole wire to the computer. The computer sees it go from battery voltage to zero and it knows I open the door and it turns on the interior lights. And now let me take this wire out and you're going to see my interior light that's on. Let me move this around. So if you look up here, take a look at my light. If you can get to that metal in here. Kind of hard to see with the light, but right here I have a power and a ground, and this is an output. So the computer is going to send me my output to these guys right here, and it's going to show me 12 volts right here. If this light wasn't working, then I would be able to check for 12 volts and a ground signal at these two leads right here. One's going to be 12 volts, and one's going to be a ground signal coming in. Okay, so that's my output based on the input of what I just showed you on that door switch. Okay. And then now we're going to take a look at a simple 
for a more actually more complex input over here me and my light and then go back and transfer that over to take a look right here so if you see now this intake air temperature sensor right here now it's more complex remember it has a variable resistor but if you look at the circuit it's very similar to that switch so right here in the computer that's the voltmeter that's measuring voltage remember right here the door switch before was open or closed the difference from a temperature sensor is that this sensor can be variable between open and close or an open and a short you know you have either you have a wire you know good continuity or an open in the wire so the temperature sensor can be a variable in between versus a door switch i'll draw it again the door switch has more of a configuration like this okay and so again if i had 12 volts coming down through that fixed resistor what the computer's measuring right here is either 12 volts or zero this computer is measuring a variable as this resistance changes right here so i'm going to show you this sensor right here you have this iet you see black red and this black with a light blue tracer black with a red tracer so i need to know which wire is what and so if i take a look at it i can follow it up right here this black with a light blue tracer goes straight up and it joins a bunch of other wires that tells me it's not the signal wire that's a shared ground so that i know is this side of that sensor that's why i wrote black light blue and you can see that black light blue it goes to a shared ground a signal can't be a shared ground the black with the red tracer side if i follow it up i tape these schematics together if you follow this up it goes right here then you look at that it says focus in here black red it says nine so i go to page one black red nine and i follow it all the way over and here's your black red it says iet sensor signal intake air temperature sensor signal input that wire that pin 15 right there that is the equivalent if you look to right here coming inside the computer okay so those are my two wires that's the black red this is what i'm more concerned with when i'm measuring voltage to make sure it uh, verify with the scan tool data i want to make sure the scan tool which is telling me what the computer's receiving that voltmeter right there i want to make sure it confirms with what my my voltmeter is reading which i measure right here so I'm going to measure it on this car, though. I'm going to measure it at the sensor because it's easier to get to. So again, we'll look at the black red wire is the this side of the sensor that goes to the computer. So I'm going to show you how we actually measure that on the car. So if you come around, I'll show you. Here's my voltmeter, and I'm going to know the only known good ground on a car is the battery. So I'm going to put this right here I'm gonna make sure I got a good ground got my voltmeter and I have my sensors right here so if you come in and look at the sensor I have my black with the red tracer and my black with a light blue tracer and if you remember from the schematic the black with the light blue tracer is my shared ground so let's take a look at my ground I'm gonna measure the voltage here and I got 8.7 millivolts and that's good less than 0.1 right now let's take a look at the black with a red tracer right here next to it so right there and if you look i have 3.7 volts that's somewhere between 0.5 and 4.5 volts and that's what i'm looking for so let's go back to the sensor and i can prove to you so basically what i did is i put these t-pins they're not touching each other this is what's called back probing this is the safest way to measure a sensor if i take the sensor out and unplug it i basically opened that circuit and now I'm unplugged, see how it's loose? And I look at that, what used to be 3.7 volts. Now I'll take a look at it, the voltmeter. It's showing five volts. So the reason why it's showing five volts now is because I've opened the sensor. Take a look at the schematic. When I unplug this connector, you basically had this get open and you have five volts up to the open. Okay, and that's why I'm measuring five volts there. That's going to be the end of video one, and I'll see you at video two.